Now that we've talked about uh, divisibility, let's finish up this chapter by talking about the integers. And to talk about the integers, I need to tell you what a negative number is first. So if we have a counting number, so let's call it counting number A, then we're going to define what the negative of that counting number is just by saying it's the number that when you add it to A, you get 0. So if, for example, if A was 3, then what plus 3 gives you 0? So of course, we're going to say that negative 3 is that number. So remember, we didn't kind of define negative numbers yet. We didn't talk about negatives. We're just going to say um, it's going to be a number that when you add it to a counting number, you get zero. So that's going to be its negative. And it's a quick reminder from uh, chapter two when we were talking about um, sets of numbers. This symbol here means the integers. And the integers are, of course, all your counting numbers, or I should say positive counting numbers, all of your negative counting numbers, and of course, zero. So all of those together. And a few quick notes um, that I think are very important. The first one is basically saying that, well, if you take a negative of a negative, you get the positive back. And that kind of jives with our definition. So what number do I add to negative A to get zero? Well, I add positive A. So the negative of a negative number is, of course, the positive version of that number. So that's really cool. We can start to simplify two negatives, and that's going to help us out quite a bit. The second one, and this is going to be very important to us, is that the nice properties of addition that we talked about, commut commutativity, associativity, closure. Remember, closure means that if we add two numbers, their sum stays in the set where the numbers came from. Those properties still hold with the integers. We, we retain all our nice properties of addition, which is fantastic. The third note I want to make is a really important note. Remember how when we were talking about subtraction of whole numbers back in chapter 2, we said subtraction has no nice properties. But the cool thing is that we can just always change a subtraction to an addition of a negative. Which means we can kind of get rid of all subtraction operations and just make them additions. We can forget about the operation subtraction which is fantastic because addition has all those nice properties. And this is just uh, kind of to convince you why we're allowed to do this. So if you remember from chapter 2.3, subtraction and addition are opposite operations. So if I take A, I subtract B, but I add B right after it, I end up with, of course, what I started with, A. So I want to show you that A minus B is the same thing as a plus negative b. So we'll start with a minus b. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 0, but I'm going to add 0 in the way that I'm going to add a b and a negative b to this expression. It's like adding 0. It's like I did nothing. So now I have a minus b plus b plus negative b. But now I'm going to group them so I'm um, using the associative property so that we have a minus b plus b. And from what we talked about above, that just equals a. So this thing in blue brackets here just equals a. So we have a plus negative b. Looking back at what we started with, we started with a minus b. We have equalities all the way. So we have a minus b equals a plus negative b. So now we can change any subtractions we like to additions of negatives, and that'll help us avoid 
the idea of subtraction because we can't we don't have as many nice properties with subtraction all right a few examples here just to make sure we understand how addition works with um with integers we just have a few examples here so the first one well this is just addition in the whole numbers remember whole numbers are a subset of the integers but it works exactly how you think start at three go two over and you end up at five on your number line how does five plus negative six work well if we start at five and we go six in the negative direction one two three four five six we end up at negative one and negative four plus two this is a plus it doesn't look particularly like a plus but i do mean plus two well we start at negative four and we go two in the positive direction one two and we end up at negative two and negative three plus negative two okay we start at negative three and we go two in the negative direction one two and we end up at negative five and again you can think of the rules for addition of integers so if there's the same sign you just add and keep sign just like we did here 3 plus 2 equals 5 positive and positive you just add them together keep a positive negative plus a negative you add them together you keep your negative if they have different signs well, let me erase that it's not what I want different signs you subtract and keep the sign with the that comes with the larger number so keep the larger sign so just like here 5 plus 6 is negative 1 these have different signs so we subtract 6 minus 5 and we're going to keep the sign of the larger number larger in magnitude I should say so forgetting if it's positive or negative but 6 is larger than 5 so I'm going to keep the negative so my answer is negative 1 and down here negative 4 plus 2 4 minus 2 is 2 um, the bigger number um, in magnitude is 4 out of these two so I'm going to keep its sign so it's going to be a negative 2 as my answer now the nice thing about what we talked about on the previous slide was if we have a string of uh, additions and subtractions we can change all of these subtractions here to additions which makes our life very easy so let's go ahead and do that so this is the same thing as 7 plus negative 4 plus negative 3 so I'm changing that minus 3 to a plus negative 3 plus 2 and we're going to change this minus a negative 4. Remember, the negative of a negative 4 is a positive 4. So it's going to be plus positive 4. So plus positive 4. Minus 11, I'm going to change to plus negative 11. And minus 6, I'm going to change to plus negative 6. Okay. Now, a good idea, you could kind of just go left to right here. And go 7 plus minus 4 is 3, plus minus 3 is 0, etc. But a good idea is to use the commutative and associative properties here and gather all your positives and negatives together. If you do that, remember, if the signs are the same, you just add your numbers. So if we gather everything with the same signs, there's a lot of addition going on and there's only one subtraction that you'd have to do subtraction in some sense is a little bit harder than addition so you want to do that as few times as possible so let me rewrite this by gathering all of my positive numbers so this seven this two and this four so i'm going to get seven plus two plus four and i'm going to have that 
in brackets. I'm going to use the associative property to group them together. And then we'll have our negatives, plus negative 4, plus negative 3, plus negative 11, plus negative 6. And that's all of our negatives. Okay, so they're all grouped together. Now we can add the positives. 7 plus 2 plus 4 is 13. And then we can add our negatives together. We know our answer is going to be negative. So it's going to be negative 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 11 is 18, plus 6 is 24. And now we only have to do one subtraction. We have 13 plus negative 24, so these are going to have different signs. So we subtract them. 24 minus 13 is 11. And we, of course, we keep the sign of the larger in magnitude number, which is 24. So our answer is going to be negative 11. All right. So another concept related to integers is the idea of the absolute value of an integer. And what that is in its idea, it's how far a number is away from zero. For example, if we have this number negative four and we want to find the absolute value of it, and we signify that by putting kind of a vertical bar on either side, well, here's negative four on the number line. Well, if I took a ruler and measured the distance from negative 4 to the origin, to 0, I would get 4. It's 4 units. And I don't really care about sign here, just the length. What about the absolute value of 3? Well, 3, if I measure the distance from 0 to 3 on the number line, it would be 3 units. And if I measure the distance from 0 to 0, well, the absolute value of 0 is 0. There's no distance. So the absolute value of 0 is 0. One way you can think about the absolute value, in fact, this is kind of um, the way lots of people think about it, you just drop negatives if they are there. So it turns everything non-negative. So negatives become positives, positives remain positives, and zeros just remains zero. So you can think absolute values just drop negatives. So let's look at an example. So let's say we had this equation with an absolute value, which says that the absolute value of 2x plus 1 equals 9. So I think it's a good idea for you guys to pause the video and think about this problem. Think about what numbers have absolute value 9. In fact, there's going to be two of them. So there's two things here that this could equal, this 2x plus 1, in order to have the absolute value of it equal 9. So pause the video and see if you can figure it out. Okay, so we know that the absolute value of 9 is 9, and the absolute value of negative 9 is 9. So, what does that mean? Well, that means that if I put something in for x, such that 2x plus 1 equals 9, then I'm good to go. Or if I put something in for x, such that 2x plus 1 equals negative 9, I'm good to go. So we have kind of two equations to solve. So we need to solve 2x plus 1 equals 9. That'll give me an x value. The other way it could work is 2x plus 1 equals negative 9. All right, so we can solve these. Subtract 1. From both sides, we get 2x equals 8 
by both sides by 2, we get, of course, x equals 4. So that's one solution to this equation. But the other solution is when we find an x where 2x plus 1 equals negative 9. We do the same idea, subtract 1 from both sides. So we get 2x plus 1 minus 1 is 0, of course. And negative 9 minus 1 is like negative 9 plus a negative 1, which is negative 10. So we have 2x equals negative 10. Divide both sides by 2. And we get x equals negative 5. So there are the two solutions. Either x is 4, and then 2x plus 1 equals 9, and the absolute value of 9 is 9, or x equals negative 5. Then 2x plus 1 equals negative 9, and the absolute value of negative 9 is 9. And quickly, well, what if I put a negative here? What if this was the absolute value of 2x plus 1 equals negative 9? How many solutions would this equation have now? So pause the video and think about that for a second. Okay, so now, well, you have to ask... How many numbers have absolute value negative 9? Well, the answer is none. Remember, an absolute value drops negatives. So there's no number that's going to have an absolute value of negative 9. So by finding all solutions, well, there are no solutions. Since no value I can put in an absolute value will have an absolute value of negative 9.